Hi everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here and I'm going to talk about endometriosis today and give you some great information on something that affects a lot of women and that women struggle with with hormones and in combination with a lot of other things. So this is all in honor of my upcoming book, The Female Fat Solution, where I actually address a lot of these issues that women have specifically and talking about how to use nutrition with your hormones to work with your body so you're getting the best result for you. Very different way to approach working with hormones and your body. So, kind of excited about it. Now this is something that's um, not a topic that I have talked about a lot before, but there's a lot of great information that I'm going to be covering. So, um, if you guys have questions, you can always comment, you can always message me, and then if you are interested in joining the next challenge group that I have, you can click the link to learn more, or you can even message me if you want 25% off to get into the next group. So the next group that I'm running is going to be focused on hormones, adrenal fatigue, and thyroid issues. So um, really important that when we talk about endometriosis, we're talking about and addressing a few of these things that women really struggle with. So if you're finding this helpful and you know somebody that may be struggling with this, if you would click that share button, I would super, super, super appreciate it because that way more people can get this information. Endometriosis is basically tissue within the uterus and sometimes outside of the uterus um, gets inflamed and becomes very, 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 very painful. Now, the problem with this is that it can cause a lot of debilitating pain. It can cause a lot of um, other issues. It can be different in every woman. And from for whatever reason, it also can take a really, really, oh, hi, Katie. <laughs> it can take a really, really, really long time to be diagnosed with this. So some gals, they struggle for years without being officially diagnosed with endometriosis. And sometimes it's not the diagnosis that actually helps. It's just knowing that, okay, this is a thing and you don't feel crazy that your body's betraying you or why are these things happening? It's not you. It's just, yes, this is something that you have going on. So sometimes it's worth it to keep pursuing and to keep pursuing the next level of things to get to that next level where you get some of these things answered. So on average, um, anywhere from 10 to 12 years to be officially diagnosed with endometriosis. So this is, these are the numbers that are out there. That's average for women. So you're going to be, if you've struggled and had issues, and these are things like painful periods, you, you know, a horrible, horrible pain, bloating, all these other things. Sometimes gals get misdiagnosed or diagnosed with other things. Um, like they'll be diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome or something else when it's really endometriosis. The biggest thing that this also is an issue for is when women are trying to get pregnant. Um, years and years. Yes. Oh, when you're 18. Yeah. Oh, such a tough thing to battle with. And, um, and when, and for fertility issues, this can be a very, very big struggle too, because it's just something that's added in there. So, um, hi Beth kept asking if I had it. They kept saying, uh, no, then bam, cancer. Oh, yeah. Is there any way to help pass scar tissue or not really? So the tough thing with some of the scar tissue, depending on, because it's a lot of times it's the, the solution for endometriosis is they'll do a surgery um, and kind of try and clear some things out of there to refresh the tissue. And yeah, that does create some scar tissue. The good thing is, is that your body's very regenerative. So nutritionally, you can do a ton of things to help support your body and have healthy tissues and organs and healthy tissues and organs that rebuild themselves, that type of a thing. Um, but it, it can be it can be a really tough thing, scar tissue wise, because a lot of times if you're thinking scar tissue, you're thinking manual scar tissue, which scar tissue work, which is really hard to do <laughs> internally. But nutritionally, that would be the thing to support there and really make sure your body's not just creating more scar tissue on top of whatever's there. That can be uh, a big problem. So endometriosis, taking a long time to be diagnosed, really struggling long term for gals. 
Um, and a lot of times it's the emotional piece I found that goes along with this. That's a really big struggle. I actually had this conversation twice today with two different women in uh, different capacities, but really it's around, I'm struggling with something. I feel like there's something different with my body and you go in and try to get help and you feel like you're crazy or you feel like, you know, somebody's not paying attention to you or they're brushing you off or that, oh, just do this. This is really simple and easy to fix it. And you're like, oh, I've done that a million times and it doesn't help me. Ooh, what's going on? Your everybody responds differently, and especially depending on what you have going on in conjunction with endometriosis, or if there, you have other stress and things in your life. Oh, if you have this, I also guarantee you have some stress too, because that's not fun. So what I have found is that a lot of gals will not only have endometriosis, but they'll have it paired or coupled with something else, and sometimes it's more than another thing. So it's really important that you are focusing on specific things to really help your body and your health overall so that you can get on the other side of this as smoothly as possible. And that's not to say it's not always going to be a battle because there may be things that you're constantly battling with or dealing with or whatnot. It's just what can you do to take into your own hands to help your situation out and help reduce the inflammation that's there. So with endometriosis, because it's an osis, right? One of the biggest things that you got to fight with is the inflammation. Um, so every month throughout your cycle, when your cycle shifts and changes and the hormones shift and change, that inflammation is just going to onset, onset, and it's going to trigger the bad symptoms there. So that's the really tough thing with endometriosis. And it's one of those things, it's like a sneeze. Like you can't stop yourself from sneezing if you're going to sneeze, right? It's just, you sneeze. So how do you handle that as best as possible, that, that chain reaction that takes place? So from a nutritional, some, from a health standpoint, um, you know, exercise can help, but that's, of course, if you're in a lot of pain, sometimes it's really tough to be really regular with exercise. So oftentimes it's nutritionally things that you can take into your own hands that are going to be really, really helpful and specifically targeting that inflammation. So foods to avoid, and some of these are going to be like, duh, <laughs> but still good to cover and go over. Foods to avoid for sure are going to be things that are processed, um, anything that's artificial. So I'll just write fake and excess sugar, right? Those are things that are going to be really, really tough for your body overall to process. Things to include for sure are gonna be things like healthy fats. Um, very, very important for your hormones to have these healthy fats. The other thing, um, but, and I know I talk a lot about protein and everything else, but protein is really, really important because your body goes through so much. This is a really hard process and you know it's coming. You know it's there. So it's really helpful if you can sort of boost your body's nutrients, really get your body primed and ready to sort of take this battle on as best as it can. That way it can go through the battle better, faster, stronger, and then have a quicker recovery on the other side of it. Again, it's not talking about stopping this process. It's just more, okay, what can you do to prepare for this fight and come out as a champion versus feeling like you got run over by a truck? So that's where the healthy fats protein comes in. Um, vitamins uh, is, again, really important. Make sure you're getting enough of your vitamins. If you're, if you're vitamin deficient, vitamin D, something like that, it is going to add to this problem a ton. And then also minerals. Just getting your essential minerals and things in. You might think, oh, well, these are kind of basic. Uh, but really, really important that you're covering the basic things to get through this. Um, quality protein fats help you a ton with inflammation. Yes, right? Quality protein and fat helps a ton, 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 ton with inflammation. So for endometriosis, this is the baseline to start with, I would say. Nutritional changes, all these things, gotta have this down. If you don't have this down, then it's not gonna really be there. Connie's asking enzymes um, to help with digestion. So that's the other thing. When you someone has endometriosis and there's excess inflammation, oftentimes it will affect digestive issue. It will affect a lot of other systems in your body because of that excess inflammation sort of kicks off this chain reaction. So it's not just, oh, I have this wicked pain, poor me. It's, 
you just feel totally taken out, totally taken out of the game with this. So it's a very different thing to battle with because it affects your entire body system. So, um, so really something to target here, baseline things here, but then the other thing that's going to help hormonally, this is, so this is going to help and this is something to focus on all the time. The hormonal piece of it, that's where eating for your cycle comes in. When you, when you start your cycle, really choosing foods that are going to take the inflammation down as much as possible. Those are going to be those cooling foods to really, really focus on um, because there's going to be that excess inflammation. So this would be, if you've seen some of my videos I've done on estrogen and eating for estrogen, this would be it. So eating chicken, so I'll just write that over here, the cooling foods. All those cooling foods that I talk about, and if you are, if you're like, yes, I want to do this, that's what this challenge group is about. That's what I, that's what I would take you through: meal plans, grocery lists, resources, recipes, everything to do this to a T, so you can get it down. People don't understand whether it really kills your whole life. Yes, it does. Oh my God, yeah, and that's also true, Kate. That was the conversations I had today. A lot of medical professionals, they're not. It's it's more of like trying to slap a band aid on a bullet wound, you know, of dealing with something like this where you're like, oh, you got to be kidding me, but they don't have the tools to really help you shift a lot of things. And with this, you have to affect your lifestyle because it's a battle you fight almost every day. Some days, a lot worse than others. But because it's like that, it's just a matter of shifting your mindset around, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. That's okay. That's the hand I'm dealt. So be it. Just get you ready for battle. Get you ready for that fight so you are primed and ready to go and you can handle it. If you don't have these tools, you're walking into the battlefield with nothing, with like a plastic straw. You know, that's not going to help, right? It's a weird metaphor. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully that worked for you guys because that was just weird. Oh. I'll work on that one for you. I'll work on my metaphors. Um, but overall, besides the base, the cooling foods. So if you haven't seen one of my videos on estrogen, check out one of those, but I'll just mention it quick. So chicken, turkey, fish, all cooling proteins to get in. Because again, we're focused on those proteins. Healthy fats, get in some fat bombs. My favorite fat bomb recipe I made last week on um, when I did a news segment. So uh, it's a peppermint uh, cocoa so chocolate peppermint fat bomb, delicious, also very cooling type of fat bomb. Get those healthy fats in there. And then raw fruits and vegetables, and you're going to need tons of leafy greens. Tons of leafy greens. So spinach, kale, chard, all that stuff. Um, if you have a hard time getting it into your diet, I do a lot of um, blending it into foods. So I'll take greens and I'll actually use my magic bullet and I'll with eggs and just blend it all together, whip it together and make an omelet with that. It's a green omelet and you don't taste the greens at all. So I, I do that with my kids. I'll make scrambled eggs with it, green scrambled eggs, but it's actual leafy greens that are ground up in there. Um, I sneak greens into everything. If we're making spaghetti or pasta with red sauce, oh, I sneak greens in there, chop it up. Oh, I'll put greens in that for sure. I sneak greens in so many things. Uh, powdered greens in peanut butter, right? Add greens to whatever you're doing to help just boost those nutrients. Um, that's another thing too that I talk about in these groups that I work with women and why it's so powerful to be a part of a group where women are working on these things. Because when I, I talk about women, when you have something like this, you're at a different starting line, right? You feel like sometimes people start these nutrition changes and they're, they're here, Right? And they're, they're all going to start and they're going to see this process. You're, you're way back here. You, sometimes you can't even see the starting line. right? So for you to even get to the starting line, you have to do not only this, but sometimes it's adding extra nutrients to your day. So in terms of saying, oh yeah, get some healthy greens or something, sometimes it's like double or triple the greens for you to really feel that effect. Because the inflammation you have is so much more than somebody else. So it would make sense then, right, to say, okay, mm, I have this issue going on, and yeah, I'm eating healthy or whatever, but maybe I could up my greens. Yeah, up your greens, double your greens, triple your greens, because that's going to make the effect then. That's going to impact your body. versus it's, it, Otherwise, it's like taking a teaspoon of water and throwing it on a huge bonfire, right? 
that's what inflammation is. is inflammation is a huge bonfire. Here we go with metaphors again. Hopefully this one works out better. <laughs> inflammation, huge bonfire, huge, huge, ginormous. And you have to do everything you can to get buckets and buckets and buckets of water on that big bonfire to take that down. So it's more, it's the more things you do, the better. And for other people, they don't have a bonfire. They have maybe some coals going or maybe a tiny little fire, like a match. Mm, okay. So they take a teaspoon of water and they put it on their match and they're good to go. Yay. Not you with endometriosis. You got this huge bonfire, a teaspoon of water on your bonfire isn't going to make a dent. So it's really, you know, figuring out where you're at is the first part. If this, if this is you, if this is something you've thought about, you know, obviously see, you know, whoever you normally see and talk about these things. There's a ton of research and resources out there to figure out if this is, you know, if this is you, but most of the time gals, um, but you know, when I, when I talk to them, they're like, yeah, this is me. I already know it's me. And, but they're just stuck and frustrated on what to do. And then what they've also done that doesn't get them results because they're following the same pattern that other people are following. You need a different pattern. You need a different protocol. You need something different for your body because your body's that huge bonfire. So it needs these enormous buckets of water to target it and to target it from different angles. So that's what the, cha the challenge groups do. But it's really important that you know that. Otherwise you're going to be like, what? Why is this not working again? Yeah. Again, so cooling foods are a start, right? This is the foundation necessary to be there. And then cooling foods are the start, especially when your cycle starts really hammering down on the cooling foods. And then these, there's other, you know, little things you can throw in mint into your water, mint and cucumber water, very cooling for the body. So the more you can do that throughout the day, the better. And the more it's going to take down that excess inflammation. Um, sometimes people are like, oh, well, it may be ginger, things like that. Sure, but that's a little more warming. And we really want to focus on cooling at this point to really take that down as much as possible. Whew, okay, so that's the info I have for you guys on endometriosis and really getting a, a start to working with some of this because it's, it's complex. Everybody's different. Everybody reacts different. And a lot of times this is just a battle that gals have been fighting for years and years, silently suffering and hoping that things get better every month and it, and it doesn't. Uh, lemon and lime and water. Yeah, that's good too. That's uh, very alkaline and it can, um, uh, you know, it can be sort of detoxifying, but I wouldn't call it cooling necessarily. Citrus, you know, that's sort of a, you know, I want to say more of a neutral standpoint there. Um, whereas mint is specifically cooling. Cucumbers are really, really cooling. So, um, mint and, um, raspberry also very good in your water. And then, but it's that mint that's very cooling, uh, really brings the inflammation down a lot in your body. Other things that you can do too, if you have a lot of, um, there's some oils you can rub on your tummy and that can really help just cool things down. Um, I like to make, uh, bath bombs. I make them, you know, I found a recipe on Pinterest, you know, it's coconut oil and, um, Epsom salts and I think there's citric acid or something else in there. There's some, and then essential oils. So you can make those cooling too and add in some, some mint or some cooling essential oils and then it's got that other cooling benefit to it. So the more you can do, the better, the more you can target this, the better, but starting with something you can control your nutrition is a great way to get ahead of it versus feeling like you're trying to catch up the entire time. Whew. Okay. So that's what I have for you guys. Again, if you would like to join my, the challenge group I have, let me know, and then just send me a message and I'll send you a coupon for 25% off. And, um, yeah, so stay tuned. I'm going to be talking about some other really fun things, uh, in the next couple of days, talking more about nutrition, targeting specific things and, and some really great tips that you can actually start, like start right away tomorrow to start feeling better and working towards your best, you, your best health. All right, everybody have a great night.